the title of this talk is Mind and Body Energy Awareness. It is a common feeling that the mind and body are separate but interlinked and one affects the other. We hear every day people saying mind over matter or doesn't matter, never mind, things like that just to indicate that uh, mind and matter have a connection but maybe one has influence over the other. The truth is they are very intimately connected with each other. When we, operation, when we operate as a living human body, as a living human being, we find that we have access to the bodily functions, the purely physical motor functions of uh, the physical frame we call the human body, as well as uh, access to the mental processes that determine a lot of uh, elements of life such as will, direction, thinking, making up one's mind, taking decisions, and even uh, getting inspiration, even by meditation, getting into higher states of consciousness. So these two functions of human life are uh, relegated to what is called the physical body or the unseen, more intangible mind. Now when we look at uh, human beings generally, we find that the mind itself also functions in two ways. One, it controls the body functions uh, without having to be uh, repeatedly uh, tuned up or repeatedly turned on. And some body functions it turns on after repeated uh, instruction and then it monitors what it has instructed the body to do. For example, the heartbeat, the breathing, the, uh, the functioning of the antibodies in the bloodstream and elsewhere in the tissues all these functions are taking place without the mind giving any volitionary or willing direction to the body to do certain things. Though they are all responsive to certain instinctive patterns, obviously the mind must give instruction. The living force, the vital force must give instruction to the body what should be done. If the life force or the uh, intangible part of consciousness were not to give instructions to the body, the body would die and collapse and disintegrate. Therefore, these functions which are taking place automatically, we sometimes tend to ignore. A question has sometimes been asked, how are we sure that these functions which are taking place, what we call automatically in the physical body, are also being directed by the mind? Why don't we presume that the body, when it's alive, functions automatically in the area of heartbeat, breathing, other life forces, and only in the area of will, or where the mind has to think and decide, do we employ the intangible part of consciousness, which we call mind? The answer is, no, all the functions are being uh, directed by the mind, because the mind, if it is trained, can withdraw from those functions. I have personally seen yogis who could at will reduce or increase the speed of their heartbeat. I have seen yogis who could reduce the speed of the heartbeat to so low you could have just a few beats in a whole day and still they could uh, survive in that body. There have been uh, examples, several examples and I, am, I have personally seen at least two or three of them where uh, the yogis would uh, get buried in, an, uh, in a glass cage uh, with no ventilation, with no external supply of air, food, water and anything and they were buried under careful watch and pulled out after a week, 10 days, I have seen up to one month and they came out uh, uh, alive and fresh and all they did was to control by their will those functions in the body which we thought are all automatic. Therefore, we come to know that there is a certain, a certain part of mind which uh, instructs these uh, functions in the body to go on automatically because they don't need too much variation. When variation is needed, the mind sets up a pattern for them. If there is fear, then certain uh, endocrines or certain uh, ductless glands come into operation and they release the necessary uh, chemicals to enable the body to function more efficiently in coping with that fear. Similarly, when there are other threats to the body, certain other functions take place by instinct. So these patterns which the mind dictates to the body 
and are built into the body take place automatically and we don't give much attention to them. There are other uh, patterns which the mind uh, adopts uh, for a willing use of the body. For example, we want to go and eat our food and we want to pick up the fork and eat something. The movement of the hand and the fork on the plate is a movement that is directed continuously by the mind in a conscious aware state. This awareness of the mind that what you are doing is necessary for that bodily function to take place. We talk to people, we listen to people, we read books, we turn the pages, we attend classes, we drive cars and vehicles, and we eat, drink and do all these social things in life which are all based upon a use of mind in a way in which it continues to know what it is doing and is not relying upon uh, the earlier program it has directed to the bodily functions to go on. When body is alive, obviously the mind is also alive, and body and mind alive, what are they using in order to perform these functions, either in a mechanical predetermined way or by volition with the mind giving instructions? They are employing energy. They have to use energy in order for these functions to go on. And this body and mind energy is being used continuously in order to perform these functions. And when the energy level falls, it is made up by the mechanism that exists within the body and the mind, and they get fresh energy which can be used again to carry out these functions. The purpose of uh, food and nutrition is to resupply the energy into the physiological body so that it can do those things which are required to be done automatically. Thus, we have the sugars and the fats, and they go into every part of the body through the bloodstream. They get burnt as energy. They generate heat. They generate the movement of muscles by which the heat is generated, and work is performed. So the work is performed by the force available through the energy which is generated from the food. The food, which is physical food that is taken into the body, creates the energy for physical functioning of the body. Similarly, the mind needs food. If the mind is not given food, the mind also fails to perform its functions. The mental food is mental thought, input, happiness, joy, all these things that make the mind refreshed and uh, capable of doing more functions, that is the uh, food for the mind. That is why we go into entertainment, we go into social relationships, we go into all kinds of experiences which are food for the mind, though not for the uh, the body and they are both used uh, in conjunction with each other for our life forces to operate as they are operating and life to continue. I mentioned that uh, some of these functions of the mind are in awareness and others are out of awareness. Now what part of body and mind energy has to be part of awareness in order to, uh, to make life effective? and what part need not be put into awareness? That is really the question before us today. And the answer is, where we have to use what is called human free will, that is the only part where awareness is needed. If we did not want to use human free will, we did not need any awareness at all. The whole of life could run like a robot, could be like a puppet show with the strings being pulled and the puppets doing their part, no awareness getting involved except in the pattern made for the pulling of the puppets, except in the pattern which can be pre-programmed. So life could be run without awareness if it did not involve human free will. But when it comes to human free will, awareness becomes a must. Without awareness, free will does not exist. Therefore, we have to draw upon awareness to make the mind perform the function called free will. What is free will? Free will is the experience of human awareness of choosing between different options and alternatives that come in life. If there is only one alternative, there is no free will. Supposing a human being is going through a groove, through a bobsled, and there is only one route to go, and there is no other choice for turning, it only turns on its own route, there would be no free will. If life was in a single groove, there would be no free will, therefore we don't even need awareness to run that kind of a life. 
But when you go and find there are two routes, you can go right or left, you can go high or low, you can change direction, you have a choice between options, between alternatives, then free will comes into play. The energy of the mind which operates to employ free will is then transmitted to the body to carry out the physical aspect of that decision on free will. Therefore, the free will which is used in awareness is employed through the energy of the mind and the body to carry out the change of direction or to follow one direction out of many that are available at any time. Free will, is it really free? Do we really have a choice? When we come to the crossroads and have to turn in one direction, do we really as human beings have the choice or does it just look like choice? I mentioned earlier that if there is more than one route, we have to have the choice. We have to be faced with this question, which side should we turn? And therefore, we have to have the experience of free will. The question is, is the experience of free will equivalent to real freedom of will? This is a very, very old question and people have asked again and again. And they have tried to answer this question with the same free will which they are questioning. They want to answer this question with the same awareness which is constituting the energy of the mind and of the body. So therefore, they put this question and say, do we really have free will? And then they determine that when we decide to act in a particular way, what are the elements that go into the decision making? What kind of awareness is pulled from our memory, from our experiences, from the automatic patterns on which the body is running, the automatic instructions the mind has given to the body? Which out of these functions are we employing when we take a decision in free will to do either this or that, turn either right or left or go in one direction or another? What elements are we using? When we look into this, we find that all the elements that go into decision making are predetermined. They are not subject to change. Our life from birth till now, when the decision is made, is already gone through, is already preset and therefore we have no real free will. And if we have no real free will, what kind of awareness is this? That we still have to go through the motions of making a decision. Why don't we automatically have the previous conditioning and the previous patterns on our consciousness, developing a pattern by which we should continuously take decisions on our own? Why do we have to go through the process of free will? The process of free will which we go through is really what makes us truly human and make us different from all living things. If we did not go through the process of free will, we would be like any other living thing, like plants and animals and birds and bacteria and amoeba and uh, disembodied spirits and all kinds of living things, material and non-material, which exist in this creation would be the same like us if we had no free will. By having free will, we become distinctive and different from all of them. Our awareness in which free will operates makes us different from anyone else. Even if the free will is not real, the experience of free will makes us different from everyone else. Why should it make it different? Because it is the experience of free will that gives us the feeling that we make our own destiny, that we make our own choices that we may accept or decline what we like, that we cannot be forced to do anything, that we are free. This feeling of freedom, independence, individuality, individual creativity, individual decision making, it almost gives us the same kind of status and same kind of role which the ult original ultimate creator must have had when he set up the whole show of creation. Therefore, this experience of free will, even though it is not real, it is an illusion, but looks so real, makes us closer to the creator than any other experience in life. Free will 
although unreal, makes us more like the real than anything else. We have no other experience in this creation which makes us more like the real creator than the experience of free will. So it is this special awareness which we employ when we use the mind's energy and the body's energy to do things as we like in life that makes us akin to our creator. And hence it is said that man is created in the image of the creator or of the father. And that is what makes it possible for us to set a goal for ourselves in human life higher than others. And we can set a goal for ourselves to be the real creator, to be close to the creator, to find the creator, to become the creator through the process of free will which we are experiencing right now. There is no other living thing in this creation that can set that goal. Therefore, since human beings have this strange capacity in awareness to use free will and thereby direct the energy of the mind and the body into specific course of action, which looks like indeed a new course of action and not based upon predetermination, this makes it easy for us to lay down any goal for ourselves, including the highest goal of attaining the highest level of consciousness, awareness, even God consciousness. Therefore, this free will is of very great importance and of very great significance to human beings. Human life is a great, wonderful thing, a great opportunity, and must have a purpose. Supposing we say the purpose of human life is to enjoy, get around, multiply, have children, uh, raise the species, continue the whole game that is going on. If this were the purpose of human life, we would be no different from all other living things. They are all doing that. There is no use of free will if that is the purpose of human life. So when we find people thinking the purpose of human life to eat, drink and be merry and just to get the best out of life, they are missing the real point. They are missing out the real purpose of life. They do not know why free will was given to us. In fact, such people who think the goal of human life is merely to eat, drink and be merry and tomorrow we die, their goal is even worse than the goal of people who do not have free will, even of uh, things who do not have free will, even disembodied spirits and gods who are living without free will, even they live better than the people who think the purpose of life is to eat, drink, be merry and tomorrow we die. Because free will becomes an obstacle to doing that. Free will causes problems, free will creates doubts, free will creates too many options, alternatives. Free will requires decision making, free will creates confusion. Free will does not let us act in a natural way. Therefore, such people are not utilizing. They are in fact using the very good, fortunate facility we had of free will into an obstacle in their own way of living like other living things. Purpose of life. What is the purpose of life here? The purpose of life is to employ this unique feature of human awareness, which is free will, the choice-making apparatus, the facility to make a decision, to use it to direct the course of life through the mind energy and the body energy, to employ those energies in such a way that we feel we can attain something which no other automated being can attain. Hence comes the concept of seeking, that a human being can seek, can seek within, can contemplate, can meditate, can increase his awareness, can worship. It is a human being who can do all these things because of this feeling of free will. And these are the things which lead to the highest results in increase of the level of consciousness. Therefore, free will should not be taken merely as a negative feature which comes in the way of uh, free flow of life, but should be taken as a special facility given in order to seek and in order to make decisions, in order to employ the mind and body in a way that gives us the higher purpose of life, the higher goal of life, which we could not have attained if we did not have this experience of free will. One of the problems that is associated with this awareness is the problem 
of morality. If we have free will and we have choices to make, on what basis should we make a choice? And this leads to the concept of good and evil. When we make choices, we have to make a choice between good and evil. This is a handicap as well as an advantage. If one can continuously make good decisions, one can say, I made good use of my free will because when I got a choice, I made choices that were good and therefore I got certain benefit from it. On the other hand, one finds that the predetermined patterns of the mind and therefore the predetermined programmed instructions the mind has given to the body, the so-called instinctive responses of the mind and the body make it difficult to make free choices when we like. And hence we say we are weak. Our mind is weak, our body is weak, and we cannot make the choices we want to make. If we want to make a good choice, and the pre-programmed instructions of the mind and the body flowing through the energy patterns makes us go on the opposite direction, then we create an obstacle to the best utilization of our awareness by the, uh, by the feeling of guilt. When we can make choices which are good or bad and we want to make a good choice and what happens is a bad choice, then what really happens is that we feel guilty that we could have done something better, we done something worse, therefore we are to blame. And this feeling of guilt can weigh upon us and, and occupy space in our awareness which does not let that free flow of seeking go through us which was designed to flow through the experience of free will. So therefore free will, which is such a good opportunity, can also become a weight upon us because of this program already made up by the mind energy and the body energy and the functions that we perform through these two. How do we get over this problem of guilt? If this mind energy and body energy and has to flow and awareness through free will has to be experienced uh, to our advantage and we have to live through morality and do good and evil and we try to do good and end up doing evil and end up with guilt, how do we face this problem? Incidentally, it is not uh, a problem of a few people. It's a universal problem. It is a problem that you cannot avoid. It is a problem that comes by the very nature of the structure of these energy systems in the mind, in the body and in the nature of free will. The morality becomes inevitable because of free will. The functioning of the free will becomes conditioned because of the pr programs. And the rising of a feeling of guilt or repentance becomes inevitable because of uh, the course that the free will takes. What do we do about it? The answer given by perfect living masters who have gone into this matter from within, not by speculative study from outside, but by experiential study from within themselves, the answer they have given is that you cannot really change the energy levels of uh, the mind or the body or the, uh, the capacity of free will. What you really need to do is to so control your awareness that these things function independently on their own and you escape from the effect of these three entities that are functioning within you. There is a saying that if you cannot uh, control something, ignore that. It's a good statement. If you can control something, control it. If you cannot control, ignore it. Don't get messed up with it and then not control it. The feeling of guilt that we get in life is generally because we cannot uh, control something. We don't feel guilty because we could control something and we took a decision. We feel guilty because we could not control something. Therefore, the enlightened ones who have got the experience of uh, controlling and of uh, not controlling and who know the nature of these experiences, they tell us if it is not possible to control, use the alternative of ignoring it. Now, how can we ignore? When there is a mind's pattern and we have an inevitable sense of morality and we have to make decisions, how can we ignore it? The mystics and the masters have given a very good answer to that. They say, if you use your mind's apparatus, your mind's system of valuation, your mind's preconditioning, 
your mind's method of making judgment and decision, then you will inevitably have to have guilt. You will have to have the weight of karma, the weight of having made certain decisions and having to wait for the repercussions of those decisions, having to wait for reactions to your action, and therefore you have to go through the whole cycle. But if you do not use the conditioning of your mind, you do not use your own past experience, you do not use your own available methods of determining which direction to take, but use somebody else's, you escape all this. You can ignore uh, free will, you can ignore guilt, you can ignore uh, karma, you can ignore all the trap that makes you go to the cycle of action and reaction. Hence, they recommend that if you want to uh, employ the energy of the mind and body in a right way and still continue the seeking towards the highest goal that is possible because of free will, tie your free will to the seeking and all other decisions you take by employing somebody else's mind. And people say, why should we employ somebody else's mind? Then the answer is, all right, employ the mind of the highest. That is God's mind. Hence came the dictum that if you want to avoid all these troubles and pitfalls, live in God's will. And if you can find what God's will is, then you will be able to overcome these problems. God's will or God's language is expressed in two forms. In one's own intuition, the sudden flash of knowledge that comes, and in the coincidences and circumstances that occur outside of ourselves. When we watch these two and make our decisions, then we are indeed following God's will and not our own will. And that is the way by which we can still utilize the free will coming out of our awareness to bend the energies of the mind and the body to a course of action that fulfills the object in life.